Hello. Hello, Daniel. Daniel, can you hear me? Hello, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Oh, this is sad. Hello. Please kindly let me know if you can hear me. Just um, uh, yes or something, trying to. Great, that's great, that's great. Welcome on board. Um, I guess you're the first um, participant. It's, it's nice to have you on board. We're waiting for the others, so we start exactly at um, 9 a.m. As, as stated. So till then, you, you can just prepare some questions you have or what you would like to, to learn later. And we have some stuff for you, um, some good news for you and probably your friends and other people you may know. So hopefully we get to acquaint with, with each other on a much more professional level as we go on in the course. Thank you once again for joining. Okay, um, is it possible we can have some mics on so that we do a bit chit chat before we start? I'd really love to hear from some of you. Um, Daniel, Adam, Katechi, and Prince.
Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Katichi. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, so can I have a little bit of your background in, in Portuguese? Okay, we have Sheila. Can I, can I at least hear from everybody? Adam? You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Daniel. You're welcome once again. Good morning. Right. Good morning. Thank you very much. Sheila. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm John. Please, please refer to me as John. <laughs> Kindly refer to me as John. Uh, John. Sure, sure. You're welcome. So we have Evelyn and Sheila. Can we hear from Sheila and Evelyn, please? Hello, John. Hello, good morning, Sheila. You're welcome. Thank you. Evelyn, can we hear from Evelyn? Yeah, good morning. You know, I've been told I pronounced the name Evelyn wrong. Is it Evelyn or Evelyn? Oh, <laughs> you can choose to pronounce it anyway. <laughs> okay. But I prefer to be called Evelyn. Evelyn. Yes, right. please. Evelyn with the stress <laughs> on the E. That's good. Yes. Okay. We have Claudia with a T at the end. Hello, Claudia. You're welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, we have such a great team. I um, do, should we start or we should wait for? Let me see it. Okay, it's two minutes to time. Oh, two minutes to time. So I, I think we can we can talk about something for the two minutes. Um, who has a fair idea of what, what we'll be doing today? Anybody? Looking at the title um, and what's on your screen. I'm thinking it's um, about the use of PowerPoint in presentation, preparing presentation. Brilliant, brilliant. There, there, there is no other way to put it. It's the use of PowerPoint and in presentation. And I, I quite remember back back in uni sometime back, you know, we, we all did, most of us, those of us who did the thesis, we, we used a PowerPoint. And I mean, we believe we killed, we killed it in that, in that regard. But today we are going to learn just a few tips and um, tricks for preparing presentations for top-notch companies. So I'll do a little bit of introduction. I am John Inyan, as you can see, and I've been working with Fairpointers for the past four years. I've been designing PowerPoint slides for the past four years for European companies. Actually, all our clients are basically European companies because in Ghana, when you speak of PowerPoint, it's like everybody's a guru till, I mean, uh, somebody will say the play is a flaw. So, I'm kind of an expert at this, and I pray and hope that um, I'm able to pass on some, you know, tips, like I said, and tricks to you to be able to prepare your presentations. And uh, I mean, for those who want to use it as some form of bid for um, gaining contracts and other things, at the end, would also present to you job opportunities. Um, I'll speak about that one at the end, um, which my company is offering. Okay, I think it's right to start, but I'd like to hear from everybody. I know I've heard your names, so what do you do and what's your expectation for the course? So I think we'll start from the topmost person that's Claudia is, oh, okay, it keeps moving. Okay, let's start with Claudia. Claudia, what do you do and your expectation for the course, please? Okay, my name is Claudia. At the moment, um, I'm volunteering for Abbey Innovation Studio. So I work remotely. And we are, we are joining this African Digital Skills Conference. And with this particular um, training, I expect to polish up my PowerPoint presentation skills. 
Yeah. Thank you very much. Nicely put. So next in line is Adam. Okay. Good. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, Adam. Uh, Adam, I do electrical work. I'm electrical, I'm electrical engineer by profession. Oh. So the, the expectation is just to also polish my mm. PowerPoint. So I can be able to present my businesses and an idea. Well put. Thank you too. Next in line is Daniel. Daniel of of Ori and Kuma. Yes. Okay. I think the number is increasing with time. So would 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 move on and with with time, you know. Would, I would call you, you know, pardon me if I call your name and, you know, I ask some questions as we go, we go ahead. Now, business presentation design, why business? You know, presentation kind of sells you kind of, um, it's, 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 kind of it's, it's like a representative on you on the, on the screen or to for whoever, wherever or whatever company you are pitching to. Okay, it's, it's the first contact aside you, is another contact. It shows all that you are about and how serious you are about what you are about. So business presentation actually helps you provide a very good pitch or even a very good presentation either to the boss or to companies, all right? And makes it top notch. It gives you that. It gives, adds that business aspect to it. Adds that professional aspect to it. Like I said initially, we've all done some sort of presentations in our universities in our schools. These days, uh, my little nephew is even doing a presentation. Interestingly, so hopefully we get to learn a lot on presentation today. Okay, so we move on. Now, who we are. That's fair pointers. I work with fair pointers. We build and perfect PowerPoint slides for top tier companies in Europe. We also provide business trainings like this. We've done a couple in Asasi University and other universities in Ghana. Personally, I've also trained some um, lecturers in the University of Ghana on the use of PowerPoint. I mean, you should have seen the looks on their faces. And this I'm talking about of doctors who are, you know, research gurus and they're like, wow, so PowerPoint can do all this. And it's amazing what we are going to learn today. So today we would focus on the very, the very nitty gritties, the important things you need to know, basic things you need to know in PowerPoint. I hope I could see some names so that, okay, I, I still remember some names. So we'll, we'll take a turn in reading. I, I, I like it more when, when um, everybody participates. Uh, so Claudia and then uh, Evelyn, I don't think I will forget your name. So Claudia, can you please take the first three points for us? Okay. Great. Use large font size to make content readable. Use bullet points to split large text into short and easy pieces. Limit your presentation to a short time frame. Focus on the key points, details in backup. Mm. Great. So the first key thing to do when you are preparing a presentation is look at font, font type, font size. It's very important. The type of font conveys a lot of message, you know, and the size. Now, assuming you are presenting in a very large room, all right, in a very, very large room, and you use small fonts, you are going to have problems with people trying to read your content, okay? Especially if it is that much, or if it is small, you're going to have a lot of issue. And also, if you have plenty of tests on your work or on your presentation, it is very advisable to split them into bullets, okay? Like, done here. I mean, not bullets, bullets per se as in pointing, but put them in different layers. For example, use large font size to make it readable. It's a layer. So you see that it's, 
it's on its own, all right? I could have jammed all together for you to read, but splitting tests within shapes helps. That's compared to my, uh, what is it? Compared, hmm, what's the word, Clara? Put it in compartments, yes. Put it in compartments. If you put them in compartments, it helps, okay? It makes readability easy. It makes understanding of your content very, very, very easy, all right? So I'll take the next two, then we'll move on to Evelyn, and Evelyn will take the other part. So it says, add icons and pictures, okay? This makes your presentation emotional, but remember to add source. It brings your presentation to life. For example, um, I think I remember the name Daniel. Daniel, if you look at point A, all right, what is the icon on the far right? There's an icon used on the far right. Do we still have Daniel? I think it's the search icon. It's a search icon. And what do you think the search icon has to do with use large font size to make content readable? Search icon magnifying glass. So you realize that it has something in correlation with readability. If somebody has to hold a magnifying glass to read your test, that shows how small it is. Do we get it? So using icons and pictures add to the flair or the beauty of your, of your work, okay? And I've been doing this, like I said, for the past four years. Some clients in Europe like it, some prefer it not to be done, all right? But depending, once it's you presenting, you have to choose, all right? Use colors and bold text to highlight most important aspects. Now, to Evelyn, what do you think is the most important aspect in point B? Hello. Hello, Evelyn. Uh, in point B, we talk about bullet points. That is splitting your work into compartments. Brilliant. So in this point B, what I want you to take away is what? Bullet points, okay? So that is why it is, it is highlighted or that's why it is bolded. All right, you could have as well like this. Let me, if I get out of presentation mode and I zoom in, holding my control and the mouse wheel. I hope most of us know this. You can zoom in into the presentation or into your slide, holding the control and your mouse wheel moving up and down. So you zoom in so that you're able to focus on one point. Or like I'll say it's like um, our sister did focus on one point, all right? So assuming I, I could do this and give it an orange point, so an orange color. So this pulls your attention to the, that very particular part of the slide, how to get it. It's very important you do this. Okay, last five, then we move on to the fun aspect. Um, who would like to take it for us? Um, I think you can see the names. So Evelyn, please nominate somebody for us. Then the next person will nominate another person to so take first, first three. Hello. Yes, Evelyn, can uh, you please meet someone? The Lali. We have the Lali also there. Can the Lali read for us? Okay, the Lali. Evelyn has put you on the spot. Okay. No worries. Am I reading the first line? First three, please. First three, okay. So use full size of the slide, but respect borders. Hmm. And use action titles wise and a kicker box into bracket, take away box with key message, if applicable. Brilliant. And then the last one is split your slide in logical areas. Decide first how much space with which aspects needs before uh, building the slide. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Delali. Let's, let's put this into practical terms, okay? Assuming, how many of us know how to create a new slide? If you hit Control M, Okay, control M, it creates a new slide, M, empty slide. So what Delali is, is telling us is that you have to use the full size of the slide, but respect borders. Now slide borders, most of you, this could be new to you. How many of you can see these red lines over here? I believe most yeah, of us I can, can see. see. Yeah. Thank you. 
these are what we call the slide borders and you can create slide borders yourself okay but you have to do them in the master the master session i think you have to come for me to train you how to create a master a master in in is a form of theme okay you know you can go and download um powerpoint themes and imagine you downloaded a powerpoint theme and somebody also has downloaded it and you are going to present at the same day you don't know the same colors and theme you use is the same colors and theme the person use so creating powerpoint masters and themes are, are it's very special and i mean if with time i'll teach you how to do that so that you can you know, personalize it all right so what Delali is telling us from this point is that you should use this full aspect okay so if you are putting a shape when you go to shapes okay you want to put a shape there make sure your shape covers this entire part and does not go beyond the borders all right look at this as like countries all right if you have a map of ghana for instance or the world map let me see if you have ghana here oh we have the ghana map here um let's see if we have germany yeah we have germany okay most of my clients are, are from germany anyways so assuming this is germany whatever germany does must be restricted within these borders all right it's very important germany stays here i don't like this color now you know that i've docked my colors on the on the right i've placed colors here so that i'll be using so i know that oh these are the colors i use for my for my designs all right so whatever Germany does must be, must be within the confines of Germany. Same way within your slide, set borders for yourself so that you know that all your content are supposed to be within this border. Okay, it's very, within these borders, it's very important you do so. Now, use action titles wise and kick a box. Take away box with key messages. That's what, a take away box with a key message. That's a kicker, okay, if applicable. Now, your action title, for example, 10 basic techniques for good slides is your action title. It's your main, in fact, it's your headline, like news item, all right? And your kicker is at the end of everything, at the end of everything, what do you want people to take away from this slide? That's what you call the kicker box or the key message. And for most, I mean, I've worked on, multiple international slides like client slides most of them have kickers some don't but some do all right so you can begin using kickers depending on your taste all right it says split your slide in logical areas decide first how much space each aspect needs before building slide now let's go back to this place before i build a slide all right we already know the slide borders. These are the red lines. I set it myself in the beginning. Okay, I'll show you how to set slide borders with time when we when we go down there. That will be a bonus um, when treating masters. Now, we are saying that you have to look at the area and split it into logical areas. Okay, what if you just have three points? You want to talk about Fufu, Banku, and Ampesi. All right, please don't worry. I'm going to split this into three. You don't have this. Um, plug in PowerPoint, but I'll show you how you can do this. So I have three boxes here. So first off, it's Banku, Fufu, and what? And PC. Now you realize that over here I've used the entire space, but what are you missing from point one? Use large font size to make content readable. Now, relative to the size of the shapes, the Tests look very, very small. So what we are going to do is increase what? The test, okay? I'm going to change this to gray and make the test orange. That is my master color. That's my predominant color or my highlight color. So we have Banku, Fufu, and Ampesi. Let me duplicate this hitting Control D so that we look at this from another aspect. Assuming I have this, and I have this, and I present this to you. Looking at this and this, Delali, please um, put someone on the spot so that we look at the differences. If somebody presents this to you and someone presents this to you, what would be the, I mean, your impression of both slides? 
Kelali, you can put anybody on the spot. Um, Adam. Okay, Delali picks Adam. Adam, what will be your, your impression of these two slides? Somebody is going to present on Bangkok before an MPC and brings you this. First one, no, okay. what would you say? Hello, Adam. Oh, we can't get. I think that the. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Adam. Yeah, like I'm saying, uh, I think that the first one is more presentable to you. Good. This one is much more what presentable. Brilliant. Now, I am the Hello. Oh, I had a little. Oh, please kindly mute if you are not if you are not speaking. Right. Thank you very much. So, this, like Adam rightfully said, looks much more presentable. Proportion wise, it is better. Alignment wise, it is best. Alignment. You look at this and you see that they are all within the frames or within the bodies. Now, it's very important you use this, align your slides. And for alignment, you find alignment when you come here, align. You can use to align your slide, okay? You can align left, align center. I mean, you have all this, you can practice with time, all right? For alignment, these are what you use for alignment, all right? But I, I really work on them. Um, quick, like, as in when I get a slide, I sometimes have 15 minutes to send it back to the client. So I use these and they are quite um, fast. All right, let's take it a, a step ahead. Okay, step further. I said, align contents to each other and harmonize font size. Harmonization of font size. What if I make this one a small one? This is font. Okay, I make this font, um, let's do it Arial. I have Arial here. If I make this, even, let me make this even Arial. Good. You have now. You can see the difference between the fonts, right? You look at this. This font looks bulky, like wide. The Banku font. Fufu looks lean. The font looks lean, just like Ampesi. Now, in professional PowerPoint design, do not use multiple fonts unless it is desired, or unless it is within the confines of the company or your, let's say if you are presenting yourself, assuming Delali is presenting, or let's say any Claud, um, Claudia is presenting. If Claudia says I'm using Arial Narrow as font, or I'm using Tahoma as font, Claudia must stick to Tahoma. There is no point in the slide design should there be a font like Arial within it. Okay, so font harmonization is very important. Font size and harmonization. Make sure all the sizes are the same. If it's 20, 20, we increase them. And Arial narrow for all of them. It's very important. Now, we spoke of adding pictures earlier. So let's see something. Okay, let's see something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dock this down here and hold control. If I hold control, I can duplicate them and move them up. Now, I do this holding control and shift. Let me duplicate this and show you something. Without holding shift, I can move this anywhere, okay, I want. When I hold shift, shift gives me some form of alignment. Let me delete all of this so that you can see it. Let me delete these grid lines. Let me delete this grid line so that you can see more. Now, when you look at Banco, right? Now I'm not holding shift. Okay, so I'm, I have the liberty to freely move it wherever I want. But when I hold shift, it restricts movement, okay, in straight lines, whether vertically or horizontally. And this helps in making your slide properly aligned, okay? So I have Banku, I have Fufu, I have MPC. I use control shift to do this. Now, control shift, you can see, is moving it, good. Now, what I'm going to do is try and get some Bangkok and a PC pictures over here. 
So I am going to make this fight. Now remember, it's it is very going, it's going to be very bad to put um a picture on a gray background, especially I have Banku, Fufu, and Pesi already on a gray background. So what I'm going to do is make this fight and give it a border, okay, of green. So you can see the difference now. There's some form of contrast, okay. I have white here and I have gray here, and I have Banku in orange, Fufu in orange, and Pesi in orange. So let's go to the next. I'm going to do this together with you. Let's go to the next. Um, let's get Banku. I hope I get a good PNG. Now, remember, getting images online, is, it's quite tricky. You have to be careful the images you pick, okay? It's very important. Um, be careful it does not have watermarks on it, and it's not right protected. If it is right protected, then there's a problem. This Banku looks. So I'll just do one for Banku and we just go. So I copy this and Control V. Uh, here we have, voila. I'm going to paste here. So we have Bangkok over here. Now I'm going to increase this and put this in the center. Okay, it's important, it's in the center. Very important. Now imagine if this Bangkok was on a, on a gray background. Now do you see what happens? You already have a Bangkok that is, has a white background. Now it's not a PNG, so you cannot take the background off. All right, so it's important when you're having pictures, you have a background that does not conflict with the picture. Okay, so I'm going to make this white. All right, so we have Bangkok, Fufu. Then imagine you have a PC, you could have, you could also make this big, all right? Or the alternative is you can fill the shape with the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'll hit Control X. Control X cuts the picture, okay? It's not missing, it's still there. So Control X, I still have the picture. All I did is, Cut it so I can I can paste it anytime. All right, but instead of pasting the picture on the slide, I'm going to paste it within this shape. So what I'll do is I'll right click the shape and format shape. When I go to format shape in the fill section, you have picture. All right, so I'm going to fill with picture. Now you realize that I already have a picture there, but no, I copy the picture already. I control X the picture. So this picture is in the clipboard. So when I do click clipboard, I have my bank over here. So you realize that this time the bank is within the shape. But one last thing, anytime you put a shape or a, anytime you put a picture within a shape, be careful to go to the picture format, all right? Go to crop and fill the shape so that the shape does not distort or the picture does not distort. So you have the picture properly placed within the shape. All right, so now the shape and the picture are one bit instead of the picture just being on the shape. Good, please, any question? Pardon me for using bank when Fufu and MPC. We'll be going more to the business aspects, <laughs> to the other aspect, but this is to help you to do a basic slide. All right, any questions for this up to this point? Any question, please? Okay. So I guess we can move on, brilliant. So assuming we have pictures for all of this, okay, good. We're moving to much more. Okay, pick and why. Ask me why I, so you are going to pick a slide, the differences between the slide and you are going to judge, okay, you're going to speak based on what you see. So we have this as a first option. I want to take this off. Okay, so you have this as your first option and this as your second option. So first option, second option. So this slide talks about leadership traits. You have influence, ability to delegate, communication, courage, and all the um, co meanings as my chem chemistry teacher from Achimota will say. All right, so you have one, two, one, two. So I'm going to mention name. Oh, we have something in the chat. Okay, no, please, all right, good. So, um. Evelyn, back to you. Unfortunately, your, your name sticks like Claudius and then um, Daniel. <laughs> so between option one and option two, if I should present this to you as I'm doing a presentation on leadership traits, option one and option two, 
Which one are you going to pick? I will pick the option two. Good. It looks more presentable than the one. Brilliant. So now and more appealing to the eyes. More appealing to the eyes. Good, 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 good. So we are going to pick design wise, part like presentation design. We're going to pick things that we shouldn't do in design wise, design wise. Okay. Um, Evan, please pick somebody to comment on this slide for us. Anybody? Or I should do that. Uh, Daniel. Okay, Daniel. Okay, Daniel. Oh, we are not we are not getting feedback from Daniel. So um, let's let's see from our screen. So we have Jan. Jan. This is Jan. Hello. Um, um, yes. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, can you give us a comment on this slide? A quick comment, design-wise, presentation-wise. Uh, I like that it's divided in different layers. For mm -hmm. example, um, the kind of triangle from the leadership to the first layer with influence, ability, and yes. Okay, presentable. good. Good. This looks presentable, but when you when you compare it to this second option, now with design, you try not to use very expressive colors, like colors that really stick in your face, black, you know, and bulky stuff. Now you have an outline over here. Everything here looks bulky, although it looks presentable, okay, in a way. It is properly structured. With structure, it is properly structured because if you look at leadership traits, now you have a zoom out. We call this zoom out. The triangle over here is called zoom out. Thank you very much, Jan. It's called zoom out. So you realize that, okay, this information is coming from the left side. One, two, three, four, five. It's coming from the left side. All right. If you go to this other part, you have a greatest challenges of a leader. So you see that. The, slides, the slide has been woven, well woven, but this slide needs to be lighter. In design, it's called a heavy slide. Heavy, it is heavy. And for the professional world, this is not usable, all right? So how can we lighten this slide? Now I'm going to duplicate it. If you are working on slides, always make sure you duplicate your slides. So I have control D over here, good. And I'm going to zoom in to this one. Just a quick one to show you the, what a light design can, can mean. I'm going to make all of this gray. You know I like gray. Good. Gray is, gray is like, as they say, in a gray area, <laughs> kind of a gray ground. And I'm going to take the outline. Now you realize that there's a shadow. There's also a shadow on it. Where to change the shadow? When I click, right click, format shape, you come over here, effects, you can see the shadow. None, no shadow. I'm going to take the shadows off and I'm going to take this black off. Now, remember, this is your, initially I spoke that, try and dock your main colors. Your colors should be using for your slide over here. So I'm going to use the eyedrop tool, okay? This is the eyedropper. When I select the eyedropper, I can pick this color. You realize that the color keeps changing. So I want this color, so I'm going to pick it and you realize it changes over here. Good. I'm going to do save over here. I'm going to take the shadow off, format shape, and take the shadow off. That means there's multiple shadows. Ah, no, it's good. You can still take it off over here. I even stretch this one to this point. Okay, give it a no fill make it an outline. You can get your shape outlines over here. Like I said, gray often helps, okay? It helps your design a lot, especially if you don't know the colors to use, okay? We have um, a picture, um, an icon here. We can bring the icon in front and also give it a, an orange color. Now, we have the zoom out. The zoom out is green. 
Imagine orange, green, black, all mixed together. That is why I said initially, try and get very good complementing colors here, okay? Colors that work out. Now with time, I'll show you where you can get colors that work out. I'll give you a link and you get super colors. So what I'm going to do is that we are going to create a better zoom out and we are going to use a gradient, okay? Good. So with a gradient, format shape over here and where you have the, the no fill, the solid fill, I'm going to use a gradient. But I realize we have black, black over here. Now we are going to do Mr. Gray man, since I love gray a lot. So gradient is going to move from gray to white. All right, I'm going to change direction. Good, so we have it over here. This looks way too big relative to the size of other things. And I'm going to make this um, a bit of a darker gray. Good, so even from the point go, looking at this part and this part, you can see the clear difference, okay? If you want, you can also make your white. Always let there be white balance in your slides. It's very important that you have white in your slide, but not so much white. So you can see even from here to this point, there is a clear difference with regards to color and how loud this part is. So Jean, what, what would you, what would be your comment on these two? Looking at the changes we've made right now. Actually, I like the first one more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. because it's just my personal preference. Okay, it's just a, I understand. I understand. It's like being a graphic designer, right? You do something for the client. The client says he wants this one. But looking at it design wise, this one looks lighter. Okay, there's been a paradigm shift in design. Where yes, things I agree. Be, where things used to be bulky. You look at the olden days, designs used to be, you know, all bulky. And you can even see from, from logos. How, how many of us have seen the um, Facebook, um, the company logo now, the Meta logo? Now imagine how Facebook started. The logo used to look 3D and protruded, but now it's flat, okay? Design is moving towards flat, like we are moving towards flat and clean and lean designs. That's what we call them, clean and lean. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this is what this could look like. And this is clean and lean, okay? So your design should move towards clean and lean. Over here, it's bulky and it is heavy. Try and move away from bulky and heavy designs as much as possible. Now, for the football lovers, we have this over here. Um, I think I'll pick. Um, oh, we have Mary. Mary, a quick a quick view, review on these two slides. It's the same. They are the same content. Same content, but different you know, application of colors and effects. Mary, what, what are your thoughts on these two as I move up and down? The, the, hello? Yes, Mary, we can hear you. Okay, the, the first one uh, looks lighter. It looks <laughs> lighter and more presentable. The second one, it's bulky and there's too much colors. Too yeah. much colors, too much colors. Now, um, please pardon me. The, uh, there's D, imagine DWTV and GTV. You see the difference in the design, okay? I'm not hitting on our own, but you watch GTV and you see the colors running all over. You watch DWTV or even CNN or um, France 24. I really like France 24 and DWTV for the kind of graphical content they portray. Things are simple. Try and keep your design simple, yeah. clean, and flat. It's very important in presentation. You see, colors, you know, colors portray, have, have um, give out messages and subliminal um, cues. So it's important you, the colors you choose in your design are, you know, very presentable and easy on the eye. So, like this design, like Mary said, this design is easy on the eye. This is bulky and so many colors and I mean, even now UIs, you, those who do UI designs, we, we move from back in the days when you watch an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where you have on the UI, the 3D protruding stuff and you click, click. Now things are flat. You look at your iPhone, your iOS, flat designs, all right? It's very important we move towards this. Now for the last one, I mean, basically same thing. Now, 
let's move on to multiple ways to get it done. And what I mean by this, we are going to have some data or some info, and we are going to see how we can just take these, just one, two, three, four, five points, five points, and have multiple designs for them, okay? Multiple designs. So I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to show you what we can do. Now, remember from the points that we have, I did control M, okay, to create a new slide. Control M, so we have it over here. Now, we have how many points? One, two, three, four, five points. Your boss is create, I have five points. I, I'm having a presentation. I need a PowerPoint design on this. Okay, PowerPoint design on this. What are you going to do? Now, remember, this is our area for working, okay? Our area. This is our title and this is our what? Kicker. Great. So we have five points, just five points. So I'm going to create a box. Remember, do not go beyond your borders. Stay within your borders. So five equal points. So I'm going to divide this to five equal points. Let me do it manually. I'm holding Alt to reduce the size. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift and drag. Do you see it? I'm creating a new one. You see, it stays within the confines of the lines. It doesn't move beyond the, beyond the borders. Another one, Control and drag. Control and drag. Then the fifth one, control and drag. Now I'm going to distribute this using the alignment tool in PowerPoint. So distribute vertically so that the spaces between them are the same. Now it is not professional to have space like spacing this way. This one is big, this side is small, like you know, uneven spacing, things moving all over. This is not professional. Okay. Make sure your shapes are evenly distributed, evenly spread. Now, remember, I've not used all of my borders. If you have a room and you want to do interior deco, you have to make sure that you use, you know, maximum of your room. I mean, you should leave space for working and other things, but all is part of the plan. So I'm going to control, select all of this, okay, and control G, this groups it, okay? And after I've grouped it now, I can stretch all of it to this point. Now, when I do that, I still maintain the distribution. Can you see? So I still have my distribution. Now, what I'm going to do, I have my gray. No, I will always start with gray because gray is like I said, the gray area. <laughs> and I have my point, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to create another shape. This is where you have your shapes. You want a shape, you can always type within your shapes, always type within them. So you can always, in fact, any shape, you can always type within them. So I'm going to create a shape. I'm going to use a circle. Now, if I want a perfect circle, I hold shift whilst I draw it. Holding shift gives you a perfect circle. And this is how you know this is a perfect circle. When you check the shape, the um, dimensions here, I have 8.5 centimeters, 8.5 centimeters. Great. So I'm going to reduce the size, still holding the shift, and I'm going to dock it over here, all right, and align it to it. And I'm going to give it 0.1, okay, B. Now, remember our highlight color is what? Orange, I have dogged it over here. So I'm going to select the eyedropper and I have my orange, brilliant. Now, black on orange uh, looks weird. I mean, contrast wise, it's not the best. So I'm going to take a white, okay? Now, what do I do? Do I create another circle and put 0 0.2 in it? No, what I can do is what? Just control, shift, drag. Always remember, control, shift, drag this and align it, okay? Make sure you align. Then I create my point two, same thing, four, point three. All right, same thing, point four, same thing over here, point five. So we have our five points. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the test type and the, the font type and the font size within the box. So anything that comes here should be area narrow, as I've selected, so it's area narrow. And anything that comes here should be a point of system. So I'm going to select my first one, Control C, then paste. Now there are types of pasting. You can paste, use destination format or theme, keep source formatting, that is the source formatting, how this was formatted, or use, just keep only test. What is going to do is that it's going to keep just the test you copied. Why technology coverage is just going to keep it. 
and use the format of this slide. Now, do we want it middle aligned or left aligned? This is best left aligned. But after you left aligned, remember that this, we call this crashing in design. You have your test over your numbering over here crashing with your entire test. So what you do is you select your box which contains the test. I mean, I'm going to do it for all of them because eventually I'm going to bring test. Format shape, format object, okay? Then I move to the test options. Then I come test box. Then you realize that I have left margin alignment. I'm going to increase the left margin alignment. And as I increase the left margin alignment, you realize that it moves. Okay, great. Now, remember there's bottom margin and top margin alignment. Your bottom margin and your top margin should always be the same so that this in some point doesn't look dark to the bottom. Design-wise, this is not good. Professionally, it is not done. The space above your test and the space below your test should always remain the same. Great. Please, if there are any questions, you can unmute your mic and ask me. Probably I'm going too fast or something. Please let me know, all right? Great. So I'm going to copy all of these over here. I'm just going to bring them here and delete them later so that we move fast. Control C, keep just the test. Um, control, control C, just keep just the test. Control A, control C, just keep just the test. Control A, control C, just keep just the test. And I'm going to do a quick question for, I mean, I'm going to give away 5,000 Ghana CD stats if you believe it. Now, who can tell me if you look at this, what is wrong? All the tests have one format except one. Who can answer this question for me? All the tests have one format except one. Hello. Anybody to try? Hi, Hello. Yes. Hi, it's Evelyn. Yes, Evelyn. Evelyn is, uh -huh. The fifth one, the fifth point. The fifth point. The, uh, the font is different from the one to four. Good. You realize that everything here is in caps. Point one, point two, point three, point four. They are all in caps. But point five is in sentence case. It's important in slide design. Like I said, harmonize your font. Everything that you do. If you are going to do all caps, you can do all caps over here. So everything can be uppercase. This one. This is where you choose. Or everything can be sentence case. Okay. It's very important. And now you can see there's a red underline here. Class and service are together. This is not supposed to be the same. Okay, it's very important. Now I'm going to do one thing to these numbers. You realize, just, it's just for aesthetic effect, we call this cut out. Now, if you have a bubble or any shape and you give it a white outline on top of another shape, it creates a cut out effect. Now, without it, this is how it looks. With it, this is how it looks. So you see, I have a cut out effect over here. When I increase it, you see, it, it, yes, it keeps getting bigger. So let's leave it at something like this. Okay, now, who remembers one of the points concerning icons and pictures? Now let's go all the way back. Okay, I think it's over here. That's why I highlighted it. So you see the use of highlighting so that you can find things and explain them. It says add icons and or pictures to make presentations emotional and bring them to life. So let's add some icons, okay? Let's add some icons to this. Now, an icon is, is, is a vector that portrays an information or that represents an information, okay? So for this one, when you look at it, you're going to look for wide technology coverage. So wide technology coverage, what, what word should you look for? So technology, all right. Now there are places where you can get icons all right, for free, and there are places where you can buy them. So let's go to Icon Finder, where uh, my company purchases icons. Now, there are free icons over there. Okay, so you can type Icon Finder. Then we go to Icon Finder. So we type what technology, is that not so? Brilliant. So, what icon do you think best portrays technology over here? Any, any, anybody? You have lots of icons. Now for, I mean, you can get free icons. So since 
we we are doing something. Let's let's try the free icons over here. So you know, let's choose. This looks. <laughs> let's choose this for now. For the sake of time. Now you are going to get your icon. Now if you get the icon here, yeah, I should have explained this. Sorry. Now if you select this, okay, there's PNG, there's SVG, there's other. Always select SVG. PowerPoint takes SVG. So when you download SVG, you find it in your download file, show download, then you pick it, you select it, okay, and put it in your slide, all right? When you put it in your slide, this is how it looks like. Now remember, I can increase it. Like I said, always hold shift when you are increasing, okay? So I'm going to group it so that I get access to that point. And I use Control Shift G, Control Shift G for the ungrouping. So I have my icon, and I'm going to hold my shift to decrease it and color it over here. So I'm going to put it over here. Good. So I have my orange over here. Now, when you do it this way, you can color it. So we move from having a super empty slide to getting something like this. Properly laid out, space well used. You looked around the borders, everything in its order. Now, for the sake of time, because we have a lot to cover, I'm going to duplicate this. So we are going to assume all of these you know, uh, icons for um, you know, represent, um, various tests they represent. Please let me know if there's any question, okay? You can always unmute and ask a question. So we have this. So this is one form. This is just one form. Now, what other way can we do it? What if I want my circles to be shapes? Okay, let me duplicate so that we have this one to be squares. Now, if I want to turn this into squares, these circles into squares, there's a faster way to do it. I go to shape format, okay? Edit shape, change shape, okay? This will help you change your shape, whatever shape it is in the original form into another shape. So I'm going to do a lasso around this, but shape format, edit shape, change shape. I need a square and I get a square. So just from here, I have two design alternatives. Okay, what if I want an icon holder? What do we call an icon holder? An icon holder or an icon placeholder is any shape that carries an icon. I need a special icon placeholder for this. So that means I would have to reduce this one, okay? And create special shape for this. I'm going to select shape over here and make sure it's the same size as this. Send it to the back so that the shape can be revealed. Now this color, this color and this color, not good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this. I drop the colors that I put here and make my icon fight. Okay, now I'm using these colors because these are the colors I've chosen to define my slide, all right? Now, for example, if you're working for MTN, you'll obviously be using um, yellow. If you're doing the same for Vodafone, you'll be using red, but then red as your major color and colors to complement it, all right? So I'm going to do this for all of this. Yep. I'm going to send all of this to the back, arrange, send to back, and change all my icon colors, right? And align them. So right from this, we have one, right from this, why technology coverage? We have this, we have this, okay? Somebody might say, oh, there's too much orange. Fine, you can make this, like I said, your white, give it a nice gray outline. Remember, gray is always a good point to start from. Gray is always a good point to start from. Then color your icons orange. So whenever you take color from something, you must give it back to another. So we have this and we have this. All right, what other way can we make this slide look also presented? We have five points. Now let's go to another one. Let's create new slide, control M, five points. A shape again. Remember, you always start with a shape, all right? This time, instead of going horizontal, I'm going to split it vertically. 
Are we on the same page? Good. So, I mean, to make it quick, I have a splitter here. This is efficient element. I'll give you the link. You can download it later in column spacing of 20. All right, so now I have five columns. And remember, over here, we had five rows. Over here, we have five columns. What are we going to do? I want all of these to have some sort of top, you know, cornered edges. And you can do this by selecting the edit shape and changing it to this shape. See this shape has rectangle top corners rounded. Okay, but the corners are too rounded, the curves are too much. So what I can do is I come here and reduce the corners, can increase them over here. Yeah, reduce them a bit so that it looks much more presentable. Now, brilliant. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Good point. Now I'm going to borrow my elements from here. That is one, two, three, four, five. You know, you know how to create these circles. They are just a perfect circle with numbers. You type the numbers within them. And I'm bringing them here. But this time, instead of going vertical, they are coming horizontal wise. Okay. So I'm going to do the same for one, two, carry three over here, carry four over here, and bring five over here. Now, always remember this must be in the middle, align, perfect alignment. This is not alignment. Okay, this must be in the middle of this guy. This must be in the middle of this guy. Okay, make sure, always make sure that your slides are perfectly aligned. Hmm. Now, like I said, always start with your green so that you have a clean you know, start, all right? So I have this, so where would the test go? Hmm. Okay, I can choose to bring the test over here and my icon to be at the top. But I didn't create extra shapes for the icons or icon placeholders or icon holders. But I can fragment. I can create shapes from shapes. So what we call, I mean, you know the meaning of fragmentation, but this is what I mean by fragmentation. I'm going to create a shape along or across everything. But how fragmentation works is that you have to select the shape that you need to keep the property. I want to keep the properties of this one, but I want them to separate from the ones below. Okay, so I select this and I'm going to say, okay, all of this shape should be cut through by this shape. But then after it has been cut through, I still want these shapes. So I'm going to merge shapes, okay, and fragment. So you realize that I have multiple shapes from just five or six shapes now. And I'm going to select just the shapes I want to keep. And delete these ones. But I realize that the space is too much. So I'm going to just bridge the gap a bit. Okay, brilliant. And I'm going to select a color for these just to separate them. And as usual, John is always going to go for, going to look out for its white balance. Give it a gray outline. Give it a nice white balance. So we can see where we are going to over here from this or from this guy, we have this, we have this, and we have a different layout, all of the same one, two, three, four, five points. So what am I going to do? I'm obviously going to carry these points over here, dot them somewhere on the right, and just copy, control C, control V, control C, paste, copy, paste, Control A, select all, control C, paste. Control A, select all, control C, and paste. Then I, don't have, I have no need for this anymore, so I delete them. All right, good. But remember font size and all that we spoke about, so I've got to increase this font size. Now, if you look at this, what is the difference? This is in two, this is in two layers, two layers, two layers, one layer, so I have to split this. Holding shift, I click enter. It moves to the last line. Now, if you don't hold shift and you click enter, it creates a new line, all right? For example, a, a new bullet line, but I want them to be on the same subject. So I hold shift and enter. So the spacing is properly done. Now, like usual, I'm going to bring my icon. I need new icon. I actually have an icon library. I mean, after you download icons, you can always, um, 
create a library by yourself, okay, or for yourself. I have an icon library where I get my icons from. So if I download any icon, I have a store, a place where I store them, and it's also in PowerPoint. So it's going to load so that I show you how it's done. I mean, it looks, I mean, it's a collection of my icons. So if you want them, I can give you some, not all. These are things that I've done. Icon. So let's let's let me just select an icon from here. But then you know how to download icons, all right? So I'm just going to let me just choose the target icon for no good reason. And I'm going to paste it here. But like I said, your icon should always, I mean, the meaning of your icon should be that of your sentence over here. But we are doing this for the sake of time. Okay, so I'm going to align this over here. So white, and like I said, for the sake of time, you're going to have this. So this icon is used for target, okay? If you have a sentence or a, tweet or a phrase which means target, that is when you use this icon. So you can see our boss gave us how many words? Five statements or five sent um, sentences. And out of this, we got this, we got this, now we have this. So always try to arrange things. If you did it horizontally, probably don't like it, try it vertically, try another sheet, okay? So we have this. Now let's try the last way. I mean, we, we can do this a million ways. That's why we have um, a million ways to do it over here, okay? Last way. Please, any question? I think I should pause and ask a question. Any question, please? Any question from the audience? Ah. I think, Sheila, any question? No, please. Okay. Priscilla? Priscilla Wilson, any question? No, no, thank you. Okay, everything clear? Yes, so far, okay. so Thank you. So let's create our last and final slide and see what we can do also with the same thing. Now, remember we spoke of pictures, using pictures, okay? So I'm going to create a box as usual. Now, this is when you have little content. Also, you can do it when you have multiple content, just that the shape sizes and other things will change, the arrangement will change, okay? As usual, I'm going to start from my gray. I'm going to push this up a little. Like I said, I want to use pictures for a picture for this part. Okay, so a good site where you can get pictures. Let me show you some sites where you can get pictures. Now, Pixabay, you can get free pictures to download. Pex Pexels, you can get free pictures to download. Um, should I put them in there? I think I should put them in the chat would help. Okay, we have pixels, we have pixel page. Then we have free pick. Okay, free pick, you can get icons and everything, virtually everything designed over there. You can get design stuff to um, references also over there. So over here, I mean, we have an account over here. So I'm going to look for, um, let's say technology, a picture on that. So I'm going to go straight to photos um, premium. I mean, there are categories here. If you want a vector, if you want a picture. So this looks cool. Let me select and download this one. Okay. So I have it. I'm going to select it and put it on my slide. All right. Okay. Uh, let me minimize my slide and uh, place it there. Now I have it here. So it's big, it's super big. But then remember what I did initially. If I want to, I want to fill this shape with this picture. So I'm going to hit Control X, or even I can hit Control C. 
to copy it. Now, when it copies, I mean, it moves to the clipboard, okay? So I'll select the shape where I want to place the picture. Okay, I want to place this picture in this shape. So I select the shape, right click, format shape. Then I go to the fill options, but I want to fill with a picture. Okay, remember we selected the banku some time back, so it's still in the clipboard. So this time I'll go to clipboard to take the newest thing. Good. So now we have our picture, but you realize that this picture and this picture are two different things. Although they are the same, this looks cute and it is not good. So like usual, you go to, you select the shape, go to picture format, crop and fill. Now you see it is wide and I mean, it has spread the picture within the shape really well. Now I can delete this. I don't need this one. So what's next? What's next is how do I add one, two, three, four, five? So I can select this one, two, three, four, five. Remember, one, two, three, four, five. And I bring them here. But at this time, I want them to be circles. So what do I do? I go to shape, edit shape, change shape, then circles. They are not perfect, they are oval. So I can just make sure they all have the same size. Now, remember the font size is too big for the shape. It's floating out of the shape. This is not done professionally. So you have to reduce the font size, make it bold. If you still want more spaces, you can take the right and left, left and right margin off so that everything looks I mean, properly placed. I'm going to select Control G and place this properly in the center. All right, good. But then, do I want my test in this or I want my icons in this? So I'm going to duplicate this and put them on the left and delete this. All right, good. Then bring them a bit together and redistribute them because they seem quite far apart. Oh, this is cool. Now align it to this again, Control G. Now there's no space for my test, so I'm going to reduce this, bring it up, okay? Bring it up a bit, reduce the outlines, take the outlines off to create a cut effect, Control Shift, drag it. I still have it, make it into an orange, okay? Reduce the size, then realign it over here. So now you see what I have. First off is the white circle cutting through the shape because there's a white background. So assuming you had a gray background, this shape should be gray so that it will create a cut effect. All right. Now, what I have is my test. I'm just going to make this into a box, then take the fill off. So I'm just going to align this to this, align this to this, align this to this guy, align this to this guy and align this to this guy. Good, so we have one, two, three, brilliant. Now let's go look for some icons. You know where to go for the icon. I think I didn't place the icon finder. Yeah, this is icon finder. I'm going to place a link in there. You can get free icons over there. Brilliant. So let's look for, um, I, I like the coffee mug icon. I mean, like I said, your icon should relate to your stuff, but for the sake of time, we are just going to pick. So for those who are not available, you know, you just click your icon, download in SVG, not PNG or other. So download in SVG, after it's downloaded, show it in the folder, you copy it, then you put it on your slide, okay? I mean, coffee has no relation to techno the technology right here. Like I said, this is just for sake of time, so I can color it. Every good and perfect icon has the recoloring property, okay? It's very important. I mean, I'm supposed to use different icons, but we have a lot to cover and icons relating to the test. Good. So you can see, now what is missing? Our numbers are missing. I mean, it's not that you have to number everything all the time, but just for the sake of carrying every content here, this will be too orangey. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to make this gray. Yeah. 
um, for the sake of time, just. No, there are a million ways you can you can put a slide together, million ways. Just like I said, look at the space you have, split your, I mean, slide into areas, areas which you want, like this part, you have four areas, five areas, so I split it to five areas, five areas, five areas, and this time I'm using a picture, okay? It's, it's really important, you, all, you plan before you start building your slide. Always plan, split your slide, space into logical areas, then design your slide. So you realize from this guy, just this, we get this, we get this, we got this, and now we have this. Any, any comments please, or any question from the team? Any question from the team, please? Okay, Nancy? I, I think it's, everything you've done is fine, but it's a little bit too fast for me, so I couldn't do any slide. <laughs> oh, everything sorry. you've done is fast. I was expecting that maybe when you do a slide, you ask, do mm. this slide. Let me have a look at it. I mean, you go step by step, but you yeah. went on to do all that because of I can I'm sure it's because of time, but it's time. really nice. Yes, yeah, I'm a little bit conversant with some of the things you have done, so I'm mm -hmm. sure the recordings will help me better it off. Great, yes, great. So the Thank other you. reason is, like you said, there's a recording. Yeah, I'm trying to cover as much as possible, but like you rightfully said, please always pull me and draw my attention. I mean, put on your audio. Tell me, John, please slow down. We are moving too fast. It's not a rap contest. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll okay, move fast. You. Is there anything from this slide anybody would like me to go over? Anything from this part anyone would like me to go over? Something you did not see, probably how I changed from circle to, I mean, box, you no, know, really fast like this. You can do the same thing, change it to a triangle. Any, any question? Great. Um, John, I think, I, I think the tools, some of them are, some of the tools you're using are recurrent. So I think even if we miss it in this particular run, you may use it in another run and then you will pick it from there. And like you said, there's a recording, right? Sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we are moving on. And I did a couple, this, I also did this. This is another way you could do it. Same thing. Same info. And just imagine you bring your, your icon over here. But this time, remember, the icons, these are different colored. I'll show you how you, you get this done. Make it a little bit sizable. Um, too big. I pick, remember the eye, eye dropper, right? Pick this color. Uh, pick this color. Eye dropper. And the eye dropper tool is very helpful. Those who use Photoshop and Illustrator um, know this tool. I mean, in other, other softwares which uses this tool. Okay, so I will just walk you through how, how I came about this. Now, remember this one is the same thing, circles, but then without the picture. How do I create this? I'll create one so that we all see how you can do it. Now, when you come to the shapes, you, you have a lot of shapes over here, okay? You see this shape, this is an arc, okay? When you select it, always hold shift. Remember, please hold shift when you are drawing your shapes after you select them, or the shapes will distort. So you can draw an arc all around it. Can you see? You can move it up, down. So let me increase the width of the line. Remember, this is a line. So you only have access to width. I mean, when you, when you put um, a filling there, it looks like kind of a, uh, what do you call it? Pie kind of charts kind of stuff. 
So um, let me increase this. So I have this, let me make it orange. Um, sorry, outline shape. Um, let me choose this orange. I'm going to duplicate this same shape, right? And make it green. But then I'm going to align it, dock it, holding shift. I'm going to dock it on top of the shape. So it looks as though it's on it. And reduce the angle. Can you see it? Bring this one on top. So this is what you have here. So from one, this, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this, and this. Okay. Now we are going to do a quick fun project. And um, I think I like, um, oh, why do I, Nancy's um, point she made. So we are all going to do this, everybody. I, I hope we all are in front of our pieces and we have PowerPoint. Um, we are just going to do a quick fun part for about 15 minutes, 15 to minutes then. We'll treat the, we'll have a look at what a master is and how to manipulate a master. For those of you who download themes, like I said, it's not the best because if you download a theme and you use it, another person uses it in the same presentation, when the person uses it before you, uh, you're in trouble, right? It doesn't look professional. All right, so we are going to do this. Let's get Coca-Cola. We are going to design this in PowerPoint. So everybody, PCs and mouse, PowerPoint open. Okay, now this is not cool. If you want to take this background off, there is, especially if you have a pure white background, there's a way to take it off, okay? So you go to picture, select the picture. This is a picture I got from Google. Select the picture, select the picture, then go to remove background over here. Now, everything in purple is going to be removed. Everything in purple is going to be removed. But then remember, we don't, we need this part and it's also been um, color purpled. We need this part, it's also been color purpled, okay? So we want, this um, helps you to keep parts of the picture, this helps you to remove parts, but then we want to keep this part, but it's being removed. So what you're going to do is select this. Go to control Z again. When you select this, you draw a pencil, I mean a line over where you want it not to be removed and it keeps it. Do same thing to the bottom and it will keep it. Good, I think, um, can we, is it possible we all get Coca-Cola shapes or I should send this one to you? So after you've done that, you do keep changes. Now you see, you have a good shape over there, good Coca-Cola bottle over there without any you know, of the fight stuff. So you can use it to remove your fight backgrounds from your pictures. Um, I think- um, John, could you go over that again? I missed it. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Thank you. Thank you. So, I have this picture with a white background, but I want to put it in Let's Coca-Cola so that it looks nice. I, I mean, I can't have this design-wise, it's not cool. So I select this. There is a fast way to do it, but then it's, it's quite, you know, fast always gives problems. So select the picture format, remove background, okay? I'm going to remove the background. When you select remove background, it automatically takes care of the white spaces or the white areas in the picture, okay? Or the places that are really close to the white or the places where it cannot detect. Unlike Photoshop, this is not like a true picture editing tool, okay? This is a PowerPoint, it's a presentation tool. So go to mark areas to keep, select mark areas to keep, and I'm going to mark the areas I want to keep. It has selected this part. Remember I said the purple part is selects and the part is going to delete. So assuming I said keep changes, you realize it is deleted the purple parts. So let's control Z, remove background. So mark areas to keep selected. I want PowerPoint to keep, I want PowerPoint to keep, oh uh, yeah, good. To keep this area. So I just draw a line over it and it automatically gets it. I mean, it's, it, that's it's computing. 
there are, for complex pictures, you need to do more selection. And voila, we have the path that I go to keep changes and it keeps the change. So instead of having a white background and all of that, it is, it is all boom, 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 boom. Okay, so um, I'll, be, I'll be checking it out. What this is, is just a black, I mean, a black, um, what do you call it? Test box, like we have, like I did with a gray black with let's Coca-Cola over it. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Instead of having a picture Coca-Cola, what if your client says, or I mean, your symbol is orange, you want to make Coca-Cola orange, you want to personalize it, I mean, it's not yours. I want to personalize it. How do we do this? So let's all get a Coca-Cola bottle and this one liter, right? <laughs> one liter bottle on our screens like this. It can be on a new white plain um, PowerPoint. So you can come here, blank presentation, select, go to file and select a blank presentation. And just like I did with other pictures, let me show you how I did this. You can just go to Google um, Coca-Cola images. Yeah, select one that you would like to move along with. That is clear. Always select images without watermarks too. So I think I selected this. This is what I picked. It has a white background. I copied it. Controls, copy. You can copy right from there and control V. Paste it. You see it has pasted. Good. So control Z. So please do this for me. And this is for an icebreaker to you know you have to finish by 10:30 to continue with, with the master to get to understand what the master is. So we are going to recreate this in PowerPoint. We don't need any high tech stuff, okay? So what you are going to do is that get a ship, just a ship, any ship, all right? Like I said, I always start with a gray area, put it on top of it, but then we are going to reduce the transparency. So right click, please let me know if I should slow down. And you can use it, this is, not, this is just to help you edit stuff, create things on your own. You see, it's in your presentation. Hello. Hello. Hi. Please, um, how do I copy the picture from Google and paste it? Yeah, just right click. Um, like after I have the picture, right click, copy image. Yes. Copy image. And when you come to PowerPoint, let me create a new Control M, Control V, it will paste. You have it okay. here. Do you have it? It's not pasting. Okay, so what you can do, another alternative, it depends, sometimes depends on your um, PowerPoint um, version also. So save image, okay? You can right click and save image. Okay. So you can save it as um, whatever you want. So that in the other place where you, where you think you can find it. So pictures, uh, I don't like saving stuff on pictures one, one, one. <laughs> so you see, so I go to pictures one, 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 then I drag it. Can you see? If you drag it and you put it on the PowerPoint, you would get it. Or- Okay, thank you. Is it working? Yes. It's okay, great. Hello. So now you have it, brilliant. Hello, John. Hello, please. Claudia, Claudia here. Yes, Claudia. I, ha I have also chosen a blank, but I saw C click to add title on the blank. Will it affect my image? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just, I know, just, just delete. You can delete it, create a new shape. Just delete it and create a new shape like this. Come to shape and create a new. Often, you know, work, working in the default test, test uh, what do you call it? Box that the PowerPoint brings, it's, it's quite weird. So often create shapes and you have control over the shape. Okay, so I believe most of us have this. So just put the shape on top of the, I mean, make it quite big, put it on top of the Coca-Cola, okay? Then right click, then go to format shape. When you go to format shape, you realize there's shape field, there's transparency. Reduce, increase the transparency so that you can see the Coke a bit, a little bit of the Coke. Or if you like, you can, let me see if I change it to this. Okay, good. You can make it an orange or any color. So you can see a little bit of the Coke within the shape, within the shape. So I have a transparency of about 34. You can increase it depending on how your screen resolution 
is um, all your colors are kind of on your screen. Okay, so we have this. Most of us are here. So right click the shape that you just gave a transparency to. Right click it. When you right click it, go to edit shape. Can you see edit shape over there? Edit shape, good, let me close this. Now, you have, if you've done the edit shape, you have one, two, three, four points. Have you seen the four points? Brilliant. Now you can create and delete points by holding the control. If you want to create point, you hold control and you click on an empty space to create another point. Create points. So you can create points. Just create points. Don't worry. We'll just see what we do with the point. If you want to delete point, you do same. Edit point. You hit the control and you go to a point. You see, you can delete. Good. Can delete it. Can delete it. Good. So let's create a new point over here. So what we are going to do is that we are going to move the point. Now I'm zooming in. Like I said, hold control and use your, your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, you need to zoom in. So I'm going to bring this shape right here. Create another shape. Bring it right here. Okay, but you realize that when I zoom in, it's beyond the Coca-Cola bottle, the, the shape, right? So what I'm going to do is, you see these lines, this white knobs it gives. When you ink, when you move it, it gives you cornered angles. Okay, can move this a bit. Select this one to also move it a bit. How many of us need a repetition of this one? So we have the top covered. Okay, now let's move to the sides. I'm going to move this one over here. Okay. And anytime you see a contour, create a point. So I'm going to create a point over here. Then move it over here. Okay, and slide this one over here. Good. So the Coca-Cola is taking shape, okay? I'm going to have this. What does Coca-Cola have to do with shape? Oh, interesting. Okay, so always, you know, if you want to move one point at a go, you can hold your Alt. If you hold Alt, you see I'm moving just this point. You can hold Alt to just move one point. So the key is to move the point around the bottle. Okay, that's the key, to move the point around the bottle. So that it takes shape. I'm going to do same over here. John, you said, how do you create the point again by pressing control? Yes, control I mean, at any point of the shape. Do you see it? It creates it, any point, it creates it. If you want to delete, same thing. If you want to delete this one, hit control and it will delete. Hit control and it will delete. Good. So we have this over here. So I'm going to move this. Perfect. Uh, there are still some lines over here. So I'm going to create a sh another one over here, move it here, reduce this one. The unfortunate thing about PowerPoint is that, you know, it is not um, a vector, what do you call it? Software like um, scaling it is difficult. Scaling stuff on it is difficult like Illustrator. You can zoom Illustrator out to like 100 times, but PowerPoint just to just a few times. So I'm going to hold this and just help hold Alt because I just want to move this knob, not the two knobs. If you don't hold Alt, both knobs move. So I'm going to hold Alt and move this knob. And just move this knob a bit up down here. Move this knob over here. Up a bit. Okay, bring this one here. So you see, just like that, our shape is taken from. So assuming I should give it a color, at least uh, um, if I should take the transparency off, you can see that our Coca Cola is taking shape. Yeah, we can see that. So Control Z. So back to the editing. 
please let me know if there is something I have to redo for you. Always use your control to zoom in, zoom in and out. It really helps when you are working on slide, especially when you have lots of details so that you don't miss things. Okay, you don't, you see wrong spelling and other things. Okay, so I have this now shipping the shipping this part. If you lose your point, you can always right click and go to edit point to come back on. Okay, create more point over here. Create another point over here. Redo this one. this one down a bit, get this one over here, create another point, bring this one out a bit, bring this one down, voila. Okay, so we need to bring this one here. Ah, can zoom in further, that's painful. Okay, create another. So anytime you need a contour, you can create points. Anytime you meet a curve or something, or you need to you know, move something around, you can always create points. So create a point over here, then drag this down, drag this down, and this over here. Ah, as Coca-Cola is finally, um, if any for reason that we're taking shape, but it's taking shape. this yay you're getting somewhere now create another contour bring it up a bit reduce this one bring this one in do i need to create another contour over here i need one contour over here good yeah i need this to come in this to come in i need this to come in I think we are almost, I'm going to duplicate this just for the sake of, so this is what we have currently after you do this without the transparency with a much deeper orange. Can we see where we've gotten to? Okay, so let's go back. The next thing we are going to do is, I mean, put this part over here. I'm also going to give it a little bit of transparency, make it um, what color can this, yeah, yeah, the blue would help me see. So I'm going to put this over here. Or you can even, what you can do to make things simple. Remember what, what I said about um, fragmenting. So let me just use it for this one so that you see. So you can put a shape across here, okay? Put a shape across. I want to divide this shape. So I'll select this, all right? And select this and hit fragment. So I have three shapes. I need this, I need this, I don't need this. So I'm going to delete this. So I have this shape and this shape as three different shapes and I have this one as the red. Let me eye drop the Coca-Cola red. Can you see where we are going with this? Same way. You can cut out the top. But with this one, I'll need a bit transparency to see this so that, um, I mean, I want a curve. I want it to cut at um, a much more curved angle. Create a shape, yeah. Cut somewhere from here. Edit. Uh, edit point. Good. So I have this, and I need this to come here.
Okay, let's just do this. I'm going to fragment this, select this one and format shape fragment. Okay, so I have them in different shapes. So I can delete this, I don't need this, but this can go to what? Red, okay. With time, I mean, because the lack of time I'm speeding, right? We can get the exact same thing. So over here we have this. Now we also need this part, okay? So we have this, but this part is now many layers, one, two. So we can separate this one too. Create a shape overall. It somewhere here. It should take a more curved because I mean it's a drink. It's going to be straight depending on. So I'm going to select this and select this, then fragment. All right. But then I only I don't need this, so I can delete this one. And this one picks more of I mean it's supposed to be the water. Okay. Or the sorry the clear the clear part. So you see where, where we are getting with this. Are we on the same page? Any questions so far? Good. So we, we move on. Now, I spoke of Inkscape. It is it is very important that you have this tool. It is free. So let's go and get Inkscape. You can download Inkscape anytime. It performs the same function, but like it has a much more wider view. Okay, you can you can increase the size as big as you want, and you can import and export stuff from PowerPoint to it, and vice versa. You know. So you can download this at your at your free time, okay, and have it. So we have the red. We have this guy now. This this red looks, um, you know, grid more of a gradient. So I'm going to pick the gradient eyedropper, and then I need it to move from left to right, okay. I'm going to pick select this one, and pick the middle color. I uh, have to come here a bit. Then select the right one and pick the right color here. So you see right now we have more, more of something that looks round because of the gradient. Okay. Please, anybody wants me to show how the gradient is done again? Or we are okay. Okay. Repetitive play. <laughs> okay. So this is it. We have our, remember, we, we fragmented. So we have our white, and this is gray. And let me do it gray first. So format shape. Go to gradient. Okay. Now, often if you want to see the flow of your gradient, give it a very two different contrasting colors. So you realize that it's moving from top to down because over here it's supposed to move left to right, but it's moving from top to down. But you change, you can change the direction of the gradient. One. So we see the red, I need the red to be on my left. So over here, I change the direction. The red is on my left, just as it's portrayed here. But if you look at this, there are about, I mean, three to four different gradients, but using three gradients helps. So I add another point. So I have one, two, three, evenly spaced. So I select this color and I go to the color I need, but I need to pick, I drop the color from the cook. I drop, select this one, pick, I drop. Select this one, pick, then I draw. So now we have that all round looking effect. Are we on the same page? Simple. Thank you. Let's see if you're going to do something right here. Um, I think over here, planning says, I will change it. The line, we need this to, to spread. We need this part to spread. Okay, so right from here, you realize that we are getting something. Okay, good. So 
we have, let's type our, our test inside. So we select a shape. I always like to select a shape to type in. So we have G O U T. I mean, there's an assign on top of it. Original. So down over here, now make the empty. Reduce the font size. Make it bold a bit. Now you have to look for, obviously you have to look for the um, font that we used. So we have this over here, it's, it's a bit spaced. Um, no, no spacing. Spacing by point two. More spacing by about point six. Okay, I think this is cool. So over here we have the bottom one. Oh, uh, I think we are. I think we are running out of time. We have okay. We should be done in the next minute. I mean, with just like you did this part, you can do this part with with shapes also. Okay. Just with shapes. Over here, I can choose a circle, lean circle. Okay, make it lean. Same thing. Make it um, orange. I think it's to and edit the shape. Okay, edit it so that I can edit it to how this one looks. Just do a quick one. Control C, bring it somewhere here, reduce the size. Okay, get about one. I mean, because of time, we can't you know, get it as perfect as we want. I'm going to rotate this so that it flips. And then I have to align this proper distributor. This one is. Um, I select all, I want to apply some sort of gradient to it. I'm going to change the angle. Mm, let me see. They all have some sort of different shades. So you can just select all like I did initially. Apply your shades. Good. Same thing with this. But then you can give them an inner shadow. Um, Reduce the transparency for them to look as though it's like embedded. With time, because of time constraints, would we'll pause here so that I mean, continue with it. You can get the Coca Cola um, test or font online, or you can get the Coca Cola. Um, let me see. Yeah, you can get this online and with this one, you can just take the test or type it if you have the Coca-Cola font, right? Uh, we have this over here. Let's just copy this like we did the other ones. Control V. Yep, so we have it here. And like we did picture, remove background. Yeah, this is one of the difficult ones. So if you have something like this, you can go to picture, color, set transparent color. I want the white out. 
we didn't do the job well, but then at least we did something. I wish it did the job well. Okay, but you can change color to white. Picture brightness. I think we have something close, but not. Yeah. So, I mean, with time, if should we have had time, we could have done a perfect Coca Cola bottle right from here. Okay, but there's no time. We have to move on to the final thing because we just have 20 minutes. Any questions, please? Any questions? The fun thing about this, unlike this, is this you can change your, your colors. Okay. You can change your colors to represent yourself. I mean, you've created a bottle. This is how vectors, the vectors that you buy are created. The vectors that you buy, this is how they are created. Okay. So you can create your own vectors, you can, and even sell them online. All right, create your own vectors. People, uh, let's, let's check so that you know, you know how important this is, how much they sell these things online. And um, so we are going to Icon Finder, and let's try Coca-Cola bottle. Let's try this Coca-Cola. If I want to buy this, okay. Okay, we are paying. We are paying a um, kind of yearly subscription. But I mean, if you go online, you find the price and other things. Uh, I, let me see. Shut us. This more for pictures. But like, what I'm trying to say is, these things are on sale. These things, like for instance, this is Coca-Cola bottle. It's you have to pay for it, but you can do it. You need it in a PowerPoint presentation. You can always do it. So with this same technique. With this same technique, you can create, recreate any image, any image at all, any image at all into a vector where you can change the colors. You can sell them, you can use them for your presentation. All right. So, if, if let's say you have a presentation, you want to create a sprite bottom and a, a coke top, and you can always, it, 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 it gives room for creativity. I, I hope you, you get what I mean. It always gives room for creativity. It's important to get to know these things. So that's just by the way for the icebreaker. Now let's look at our last thing. And we are just going to, this is going to be as practical as possible. Very, very practical. Okay, please, any questions so far? Hello, any questions? Claudia. Yes, please, Claudia. Claudia. I think I'm realizing that you're on your ribbon, some of the tools, I don't know. Are the tools dependent on your version of PowerPoint you are using? Okay, these tools over here, efficient elements. This is the only plugin I have that you don't have. Oh. And because I'm, uh, I do this like <laughs> for a living, I have to do this as fast as possible. So this helps me to work very fast. The, the top, the top ribbon too. Oh, no, the top ribbons, everything you, um, once it's PowerPoint, anything PowerPoint you have. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the top ribbons, everything. And these alignment tools, they are the same thing that are over here. Aligning. Just that, you know, I don't have to come up all the way up here to align it. Everything is here. It gets has been placed here. Efficient elements. There's a one month subscription free. You can check them out. Um, John, I think you are using um, Office 365. Maybe that's yeah. also a different. Yeah, I'm using Office 365. That's true. So this is efficient element. You have a one month free downloading period. You can, and there is a webinar online, free trial, 30 days, you can get it. But I mean, use the PowerPoint, the same thing. Like I said, you don't really need this unless you're doing professional PowerPoint design. Okay, now you look at this PowerPoint, okay? Um, let me, you look at this PowerPoint. I have the beginning, I have my um, start screen, okay? That's my, first screen, then I have the next one. Now you realize that there is an identity here. If you see this, you know that this belongs to Fairpointers. 
What is fair pointed scalar? Fair pointed scalar is orange, all right? This slide belongs to fair pointers. Now, if you are presenting for Vodafone or you are, you're working for Vodafone, whatever you are doing, like KPMG, they, they are structured, they are, all their slides have a particular pattern. We call it a master, a master design. What some people call theme. Now, if you select, let's, everyone can just do this. Let's select a blank presentation. Blank, delete this. I often don't use them. They, they, are, they can be very troublesome. You can always create shapes, right? When you start, presentations are always blank. But when you go to file, okay, you realize that there are themes that you can use from online, especially if you are connected. If I select this, if I select this theme, it will give me a chance to create it or to download it. Now we realize that everything has been changed. Now it has a dark tone, okay, instead of just an empty one, like when I start a new slide. Now we have two different ones. I use Alt Enter to move. I mean, all, most of your IT techs, so IT guys, you know. Um, the theme, it gives me a theme, but uh, like I said, how, how often would you download things from people from or buy things? And unfortunately, last two days, somebody bought a theme and really did not like it and sent it to me to, you know, change the theme, personalize it for me. So that is extra cost, okay? So you can create your own theme from the word go without going to have to download things that somebody has also used. You know, things with free things is that everybody uses it. So let's go to how you can create your own team. Now, we call something Slide Master. Where you can find Slide Master is at the view. Please go to view. Please let me know if I'm moving too fast. View. When you go to view, you have normal, outline view, slide sorter, notes page, reading view, and Slide Master. This is where everything about your slide is created. Your page number, your font type that you want to define for your slide, the space, like I said, the borders, you can create borders for it. So let's go to Slide Master. Good. Now, when you go to your Slide Master, this is what you have. You have, you realize that there's hierarchy, right? Those of you who know the up chart, we have, everyone knows it here. So let me know as you. So you have this, your master. So this controls everything here. Please, are you, Claudia, Claudia are, you, are you on this page? I just want to know if you are all here. Yes, I'm on this Good. page. So you realize that this controls everything here. So what we are going to do, just create, come to home. You've not left the slide master. Come to home and create a box, a shape. I just want you to know how it's like. Just create a shape and choose any color. I'm going to choose... I mean, I'm going to stay away from the orange. But I'm going to choose blue. Ah, this blue is repulsive anyway. When you choose the blue, what happens? You realize that the blue is applied to everything here. So this is the overall framework of your entire any PowerPoint. This is what happens. Whatever Hello, John, you please. Could you could you show how to get to the slide master again? The the next word cut out for a bit. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So you can close, when you go to the slide master, you can always close master view. And now you see that my blue is over here. Whatever you put on your master comes to your slide. So if you don't want anybody to make changes to your slide, this, that's where you put things so that they can't touch it. You realize that you can't move it. For those of you who are out of the master view, you realize that when you touch it, you can't move it. So we are going back to the master view. Go to view, slide, you realize that in, over here you find the ribbon, so you find slide master. Select slide master. Now move all the way to the top. This is your master. Whatever you put here stays here on every slide that you build. All your layouts. These are all different layouts. Okay. So let's say I want. Um, so go to your slide master. You can also choose your colors over here. Theme colors. You can customize your colors if you want. Okay, you can customize colors, choose the colors that you want in your theme. Accent one, accent two, accent three. And these ones, note, you have to, I mean, add, use RGBs and other things, okay, or the hex code. So I'm going to select any of the theme colors over here. I don't need a gray scale, I need something like, let me choose this. So you realize that this will change. You see the theme colors, if I choose red, the red will change. If I choose 
this this will change so whatever shape you put on it will take a shape from or a color from these things okay so i'm, I'm looking for something very light like i said you can create your own color palette like i did on mine but let's say you are this is you are new to this creating a theme go to home i mean select a color so you realize it gives me colors within the theme so i'm going to select this and realize this changes if i select this everything changes over here so i'm going to select this okay i just want this to be at the top now let's create a quick a quick logo but then before that we are going to define parameters for our slide where things should be within nothing should go out nothing should go out and everything should be inside so right click and come to grid and guidelines okay and go to add vertical right click grid and guidelines add vertical so it gives you a red line you can see so you can move the red line so this is telling me that john anything should nothing should go beyond the red line the red line is for white space now you can control i mean always control shift drag it okay can always control and drag it i already have it here and like like i said you can also delete it i mean this is just forming the frame the frames of the slide so i want this here all right now let me do a new one for the horizontal one add horizontal i put it here so this the only thing that goes beyond this should be my title all other content should be here all right good so i have defined the space for my slide let's leave the slide master and let's see what we have so this is what we have so you see i've defined it the red is showing here you have your red and stuff now let's go back to the master view slide master view all the way to the top all right let's do a quick logo so let's say um um, I remember Claudia's name. So we're going to do a quick start for Claudia. So C L A U. Or we should just do it clad, clad designs. Okay, so um, this is a place where you put your, your logo. Change the font. Please don't don't worry your head about this, okay? I'm just doing it to, to show you something. Um, and, and I'm going to shift this down, designs, change, make it smaller. Change fonts to something else. Um, reduce this just. Uh, ship. I'm not. I'm just trying to not overdo it. When you do these things, you often want them perfect. There's no time. just something small i mean it's not your perfect logo design but we don't have the time as well. so i mean i'm going to place this somewhere over here we can always reduce the fonts the size um 40 let me reduce the size 40 i want my logo over here but then because this is dark blue sorry always work in your master please on your first slide always I think um, I'm being tempted to use this dark color. The control A white. Control A white. Then these two. Are white. Good. So you have a place you put your. Stuff. So this is clad designs, okay? 
let me put a short, I mean, please do not be limited by what I'm doing. I'm just giving you how you can create your own master, okay, or your own thing, which will run out through your slide. And I mean, be limitless with your, with your thinking, okay, like as usual, just go for it, try things out. If it doesn't work, you just stop and you, you change it, sorry. Now, this, so you see that everything now is cloud designs, this is over there. So if I close my master view, I have this as my theme, all right? Now, anytime I create control and control M this new slide, it creates this as my slide, see, control M, control M, control M. So like it has come to stay, this, is, this forms a framework. If you want to add designs or some stuff, flashy stuff, I mean, try always try design, like I said, try to keep it as simple as possible. Let's go to our master slide. Now, the, this I said determines the framework of the whole thing, but this one is your first pager, okay? So if you go to, remember we downloaded some, a, a picture earlier on, let me use the same picture. Um, did I name it 111? No, this is the code. I think I'm touching here, this is it. Let's send that picture to the presentation. Like I said, the second one is in, takes control of your start, startup page, okay? Let's say we want to create a startup page. And let's, let's just close the master view. You realize that it is here. This is our startup page. If I create control M, I don't get a startup page. I get the layout of my master thing. But because we put this, you see, you can't move it. Because we put this on the second slide after the master, it gives us a startup page. So I'm going to crop it and let it take the same size as our page. Now, what, 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 does, what does Claudia want to talk about for a startup page? And it seems, it seems a bit, let's say beyond Ghana, technology, like Ghana beyond <laughs> give me technology beyond. So we have this, okay. So I'm going to make it as big as possible. Do beyond Ghana, right align it. Okay. Now remember our master color. Okay. Every now everything you choose is within your master. Everything you choose, your master color is there. Remember we used this earlier on. That is why it's over here. It keeps. This is going to be right. But I want this like this. Okay, um, one last thing. Take the outline up. Yeah, I say bold. You define the test you want to use. Okay, define your test. Always define a test. Okay. I mean, startup pages, it's, it's where you can apply your design skills and your, I mean, you can keep it as simple as it want, as you want, but I mean, like I said, we are out of time. So we're just doing something cool for you. So let's say this is what, Technology beyond Ghana, you put your date and name and everything over here. This is what she's doing. Okay, so now I'm going to get Claudia's logo that we created, Cloud Designs. Put it somewhere. Over here is too conspicuous. You know, always, always keep it somewhere that I mean, it blends it a bit here. Okay, so we have our cloud. Technology beyond Ghana. So this is cloud design. This is our first page. Then this page takes control over 
your title. If you defined anything unique, like I said, I from where I come from, I don't use this that much, but I prefer the title because I've already defined, created space. I've defined the room for all of this, okay? So you have this one over here already. It creates, now you have your title, your page number. You can go to see how it is. If I increase this page, if I make this bold and I make it 28 and this color. If I leave my master view, if I leave my master view and I come here, insert, go to header, my slide number, page number, and footer, apply now. You see it has taken that same shape. You can see that. So if I want to change this, I go back to the view and the slide master. So I come here, I can move this to the right. Okay, bring all this bit to the top, close. It has moved to the right. Good. So like I said, this part, controls your content, the third one controls your content, your page number and things within it. But this one is for your startup page. Okay, don't mind, uh, it looks awful now, it looks awful now. With, with time, we can, you can do something better. This is just for demonstration. All right, please, any question? So you have your logo, cloud design, design your logo, get it. I mean, you can always be simple, cool. Next page for your title page. Next one controls, like I said, your page number, your footer, and your date. So you create the styles for them over here. And all this, you can create multiple layouts for them, okay, so that you can use in the future. But the most important ones are one, one for the frame, two for your startup page, and three for your page numbers and your title. So for instance, if I want my title to be bold, in colored green. If I leave, I've, remember I've done the changes here. If I leave my slide master view, realize that I have it green and bold. So anything I type here will be green and bold. So Claudius designs. Anytime you do a control M, maybe, pardon me. <laughs> Good job okay same thing with the number you can change it in your master view slide master anytime you change it if i want to make this over here remember you change it over here if i want to make this um a red color you realize it to change red is not suitable here i'm just doing it for demonstration all right so you see it has changed now it's a red color so your master helps you define your entire slide and gives your slide up the identity, an identity. I think I'm way past the time. Um, please, any questions? Hello, family. Hi. Any questions, please? I think. I'm way past my time. Yeah, Please. we are good to go. I'm good to go. I'm sure I will, I will receive the recording. Hello. So we'll do more of... Hi, John. Yes, yeah. Hello, John. Yeah. It was yes, fun. I can hear you. It was fun, but I'm sure it's practice. We'll be uh, yeah, where can I please assess the recording? Um, I, I, I think when you, when you contact the team, they'll get it to you. That is um, Ghana way. And 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 I have okay. yes, I think okay. it's recorded after after you can watch. Um I it's on the interface. I've tried watching a couple on the from the interface. I am um, that's from la, um, last two days. I think you when you check every session, you see and um, recorded and view recording. I think you can get it. Ghana Web will send it after the whole session is over. They will send it to everybody who is on. So definitely okay. everybody's going to have a, a copy. Okay, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so you can get me on john.inyan at azubi africa it's long, <laughs> dot org. Yeah. All right, thank you. And one, one last thing, 
my company, like I said, is offering employment. And then let me let me share. I almost forgot. If you we have I have a training like this, we have a training like this. It's one month, it is free. The thing is, you know, like you see, the things we do are these are just simple things. They are more complex slides, you know, from the business aspects, they are super complex slides. And we have a, uh, what we call a self-training program where we've made a link available. I mean, you learn at your own pace, okay? You learn at your own pace. When you are ready, you just trigger that, oh, John, or whoever is in charge, I'm ready, I'm ready for the exam. We give you an exam, when you pass, you get employment. So I'm going to... Um, Hi, John, can you leave your number? I would like to contact you personally for something else. All right, all right. Um, Thank you very much. Okay. Most of you can see my screen, right? You can take screenshots. I want to paste a picture here. Okay, let me see. My IT people. <laughs> please, please help the man. Okay, I want to paste this here. Let me see if it works with my copy and paste. Yeah, it doesn't work. Oh. How do I put a picture here? within the chat, okay. So this is it, okay, this is it. You can, you can take screenshots, you can take screenshots. So the entry salary is 1,008 and plus bonus. You can, um, I think the last person who, the last person who entered out last month makes a bonus of, of about 900 or, yeah, 900,000. Is, is this CDs or Dallas, 1,008? Oh, this is CDs, 1,008 CDs. And I mean, virtually after two years, we should be making more than 4,000. Okay. I want I want Dallas, but I'll speak to you personally. Sure. Right. <laughs> no so, Hello. Um, yes, please. Uh, please, is it do you offer part-time jobs or so? Oh yes, everything. Actually, I've been working from home since last two years. Oh, it's okay. Part, yeah, I'm I'm working from home. It's virtually from, from the house. Like self-training, you train yourself. So you watch the videos and you practice. When you're ready, you're like, oh John, I'm ready to write the exam. We give you the exam when you pass, voila. You learn at oh. your own pace, master the craft. And because you know, people come in, people say, well, they know PowerPoint and you give them PowerPoint and uh, that is not it. So it is free. And please, the amount over there, it is not to lure anybody. It is, it is, it is what it is. Like um, I said, the last person that entered makes a bonus. The last time you made 900, I mean, bonus is based on your KPI performance. This is fixed salary. And the maximum bonus you can make is, is was it made 2005 last, last month? Yes, of mm. bonus. Yes. Okay. 2005 of bonus plus your entry salary. So imagine with time, if you become better. I don't at, know if it's the network. Mine is very blurry. I can't see anything. Oh, you can't see. How, how do I get this picture to you guys, um, IT people? Because I'm trying to put it in the page. Mm, yeah. Can you send it through our emails? Maybe. If we can. Yeah, I don't have access to your emails. That is uh, on the on the chat box. If we can, Google, Microsoft. Why you should give? Recorded. <sighs> the picture will come in the recording. So when we get the recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get the recording, yeah, that's good. You can always. So this is well, it. Will you screenshot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I think screenshot is better. Yeah. So everyone can screenshot now, because when I try screenshotting and putting it into the it's not like teams. Teams you can you can put. I don't I don't know. It's weird. I think there's more. Yeah, so you can screenshot it. I'm going to put uh, put the link. I'm going to send the registration link to you. Sorry. So you can just register. Send us your name. I mean, just fill it for me. Okay. Yeah, just fill it for me, and would 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 give you what you need to access the files. All right, please, you can pitch it to your colleagues. Your, we need people. You know, it's new in Ghana. It's not that new, it's new, new. Like, yeah, we don't have, currently we don't have Ghanaian clients. All our clients are, are, Europe, are Europeans because we Ghanaians, we don't see the use of PowerPoint that much. But if you venture into it, you see that it's very good. Currently, the things people do with Illustrator and Photoshop, I do with PowerPoint. This design, you can do with PowerPoint. I did with PowerPoint. Everything. Okay, so, um, without much I do, I'd like to uh, 
say a big thank you for joining me. And I hope I, I was helpful and um, you learned something from our session. I'm grateful to you all, everybody that came, Elian, Elizabeth, Isaac, James, Jan, Lutius, I don't know if I mentioned it to well, Mary, me of Faye, Priscilla, Reginald, Sheila, Victoria, and Wisdom. Um, okay, there is Evelyn, I forgot, Nancy, Abigail, Ahmed, everybody, Breeze, Charlotte, Claudia, Daniel, Delali, Elian, Elizabeth, Isaac, James, yeah, I think I left with Jan. Thank you for participating in this session. And um, I hope, I mean, to hear from you soon from the, from the um, link I just sent you. So this is my number. Yeah, for those who need it, it's 0245312920. LinkedIn name, LinkedIn okay. handle. Yeah, LinkedIn, John and Nan, you can always get me there. <laughs> just type John. I think there's just, I mean, you see my picture. I hope that's okay. Yeah. Please come again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Please come again. Any questions? Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Thank you for joining me and please have a wonderful day. And be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, be good to you. We are much grateful. Have a wonderful day too. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. Welcome. Thank you. And God bless you. Amen. Bye, Bye everybody.